for the next session, um, I like to call. I mean, we've been we've been talking all about um, you know marketing. We've been talking all about customer experience. We had a long, long discussion on um, acquisition versus retention. Whether uh, it's marketing versus customer satisfaction, whether it's about attracting new audiences versus engagement, personalization, and delivering value. Now, uh, for the next uh, 10, 12 minutes, um, Jay Magdani, who's the head product at CleverTap, would be on stage and uh, would give you a brief idea in terms of uh, why retention is the new lever of growth. Jay, all yours. Hello, am I audible? Perfect. All right, I'm back again. Um, first time of the day to be talking. Uh, close to. OK, anyways. Uh, all right, so um, we've spoken about, and you'll have, you'll have uh, heard us uh, talking about how retention is the new lever to growth. What I wanted to do is take this 15 minutes. Am I audible? Yes, please. I'm going to use this. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, what I'm going to be doing is, uh, is, is quickly kind of summarize how CleverTap kind of uh, is, is solving this problem or helping our customers solve this problem. Uh, perfect. So you all have already, see, you'll have already seen uh, with numbers how retention is a real problem. As you see, as you can see here, about 20, you see, you see that you're seeing about 70% drop off of users from the time they install the app and they'll drop off. 70% roughly will drop off within the first day. And if you see the, if you see the, if you see the curve, the, the data and retention is at about 90%. As uh, you know, about, about within 30 days, you'll see about almost your entire user base getting wiped off that, that installed your app. And about a quarter of your apps are used only once. They will, install, they will install the app, users will install the app, and they will launch the app, and that's it, uninstall, right? And this is a big problem, and we spoke about it at length. So how do you kind of solve this, right? So we kind of came up with a, We've been in this industry for a while, and, and, and we came up with, with a theory that there is, and we've kind of proved it with numbers with a few of our customers. There are three phases to solving retention, right? The first phase is the golden hour equivalent, right? It's the initial phase of retention, where the first 72 hours from the time a user installs the app is the most crucial, and you know why. You know that the most dip that you see is in the first one to three days. Now, since that's when they will get the, the users get the first impression about your app, right? How is your app performing? How is the experience? I've been sp speaking extensively about experience through the day. So it's important to show them the value of your app within the first 72 hours. Now, this can be done in multi multitude of ways. You can send them communications. You can talk to them. You can show them the experience on the product itself. Or you, can, or you can use a combination of these omnichannel tools to kind of uh, get them to that aha moment as soon as possible. The second is once you've kind of solved that problem, once you've kind of gotten the users through to the first 72 hours, the golden hour equivalent, is when you start solving for the midterm ret retention. Now, you need to start delivering on this experience that you provided for the first time consistently. And that's where the brand promise comes into play. And that's, where you, that's how you solve the midterm retention. Consistently showcase a specific uh, brand promise and, and deliver to it, and make and ensure that your app becomes an, uh, a habit. One of the classic examples, again, I would like to use is, is, is Netflix. Uh, it's, they've, they've mastered the habit. Uh, they've mastered the art of making their app a habit for you. And the next one is long-term retention. This is about continuous improvement. Ensure that you are always on top of the curve. Ensure that you are, as a product, are innovating constantly and, and, and always, uh, always on top of uh, solving for your customer's experience, be it simple things like improving your user experience, uh, improving brand colors, changing brand colors constantly, making it more uh, uh, user-friendly. And that's how the three phases of retention are kind of broken down into. And uh, we've seen growth marketers as a new kind of uh, uh, job description, if I may, is solving these three together. Uh, and we, we, we believe that 
there'll be three different functions eventually in the future, solving these three different sections of, or life cycles of user attention, right? So that's the phases of user attention. And there are four pillars to user attention, and we've spoken about this, and I'll just like to summarize. The four pillars of how do you solve user attention, it's a problem we know. We know the theory of the three phases of retention. How do you actually solve it? What do you do to ensure that your retention rates are improved? Of course, the four pillars are segmentation. You got to know your users well. You got to segment your users into broad buckets. Today, broad buckets, because that's where we're at. Uh, single user personal personalization is something that, as an industry, as technology, we are still not there yet. Hence, smaller buckets of segmentations. Users from Mumbai versus users from Delhi exhibit different behaviors. Hence, they should be segmented differently and analyzed and engaged with differently. Once you've segmented your users, and this segmentation can be multitude of ways, by the way. You can do behavioral segmentation. You can do interest-based segmentation. You can do predictive segmentations. You can do geography, demography, and so on and so forth. I, I like to use a very nice example here um, between the difference of how, how it's important to segment your users right, right? Uh, all of us have used Amazon, right, the app. Um, I am, doesn't look like it, but I'm a sports fan. Um, uh, and, and I like purchasing sports goods uh, every now and then from Amazon. But there's this one fine day, um, about a few, few months back, that my friend had a baby shower, and I had to buy a product uh, as a gift for, um, for, her, uh, for her baby. So I bought something, which was like a, a small toy car um, for, for, for her, and from the next day onwards, I started getting ads about baby products. But I don't buy baby products often. That's not my interest. That may be a behavior that I exhibited in the past, but that's not my interest. You see the difference between how, how important segmentation is, right? You start getting ads, you start getting engagement based on your behavior that you exhibited yesterday, but over a longish period of time, that was not your interest. And that is a, that is a waste of marketing dollars, and it's a spam for me. Lose, lose, right? So segmentation plays a crucial role in, in in, in solving for retention. Analytics, of course. You got to run analytics. You got to know what your users uh, want uh, and, 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 and track your users. We've heard about uh, funnels and cohorts and RFM and so on and so forth in the last session, so I'm not going to dive very deep into this. But you need to analyze your user behavior using analytics tools. Conversations, engagement, omni-channel marketing, we've heard about this term extensively. Reach out to your users on multitude of channels of communication, be it email, push notifications, in-apps, SMSs, whatever drives your boat. Native UI experiences, very important, forgotten part, um, and, and, and you know, we like to reinforce, this, reinforce it extensively. A big part of, of driving retention is how the user experiences the app when he or she uses the app, right? So native UI experiences forms a core part of user retention. And how do you create magnetic user experiences? We spoke about this as well, and I kind of slapped this slide together. Uh, again, I have, uh, I'll, I'll quickly kind of uh, talk about how, how it's important to create magnetic user experiences, and I'll talk about it from a first principles perspective. All of us go to a salon or a barber shop, right? Uh, except for me, it doesn't look like it, but sure. Uh, why do you tend to go to the same barber shop over and over again? Or the salon, same, or, same, same guy over, not even just the salon, the same person you tend to kind of go to over and over again. What is it that they do differently or that guy does differently with your hair or with your face or um, uh, you know, whatever you do with your, at a salon? Um, that, that you tend to kind of repeat going to them. The four things that they do, they communicate with you, they know you, right? The person, you've been to that person over and over again, they know you very well. Same thing goes for a coffee shop. You go to the same coffee shop, why? Because they make the coffee that you want. Everybody makes cappuccino, everybody makes a latte. But when you go to them, with your face, they know who, what, what, what you like, right? You know, you, they, you like stronger coffee, you will get stronger coffee. You are a talkative person, they will chat with you while making coffee. 
I don't like to talk to people randomly on the road, they will not talk to me, right? How, what's the, what's, that's the experience that, you're, that they are creating for you as an offline channel. Translate those experiences to the online world. That is what is missing today in the online world, right? That personalized experience, be it communication, am I chatting with you versus SMS, email, et cetera. The product experience itself, right? If my salon is dirty, you're not gonna come to my salon, right? If it's got randomly weird colors, I'm not gonna come to your salon, right? The UI, the experience, the placement of the chairs, for example, all of these matter. Communication matters. The guy who is talking to you when you are at the salon is, is doing so because he's seen your history. He's analyzed your behavior of the past and hence making some informed decision with his brain currently to communicate with you. Analytics is being done in the offline world today. Given that there is historical data, if you go for the first time, they, you, you will be treated like a new user, but if you've gone there often, you will be treated differently. And that's what we like, and that's what we want. So that's about uh, how, how the offline world, especially certain industries in the offline world, have mastered the art of creating magnetic customer experiences. Right? Classic examples, again, like I spoke about, was salons and cof coffee shops. And that's something that we got to translate to the online world. And personally, I see it happening in the very near future. Any questions? I'm about four minutes away. I can take questions, if any. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jay. And uh, that was short and quick. Thank you. Thank you so much.